It is great to have this connection with one another, even when we may be apart from one another. My name is Hilary Chrisley, and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. Our connection in the United Methodist Church spans the globe in worship, through action, and in sharing the good news of God's grace. Some of us are called to share that good news in the most interesting places. Jonathan McCurley is a missionary with the General Board of Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church. Commissioned in 2009 and assigned to the Asian Rural Institute in northern Japan, he serves as Community Life Coordinator. The Asian Rural Institute is an ecumenical ministry that seeks to build an environmentally healthy, just, and peaceful community in which all persons can live to their fullest potential. The Institute is rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, and it trains rural leaders for lives of sharing and work in grassroots community, primarily in Asia, Africa, and the Pacific region. It emphasizes sustainable agriculture, sound ecological practices, leadership development, community development. We are blessed to be able to be one of the churches in covenant support with Jonathan and his ministry, and look, we look forward to his message to us in this worship service. In worship together, we give our thanks and praise to God, and we will also listen for how God is calling us to join with others around the world and seeing God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Let us join in worship. to worship. Creator God, we gather together from many places, pasts, and communities to celebrate and worship together as your people. We come to worship God. Jesus, life giver, we celebrate all that brings us together. We are on a journey, learning and celebrating. We come to worship Jesus. Spirit of love, we are a living community and we give thanks for the movement of the Spirit, ever inspiring, strengthening, moving, and challenging us. We come to worship the Spirit. Amen. So 
the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name, not to preach our creeds or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nation, finding neighbors everywhere. We are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is light in our ルカの福音書19章1節から10節イエスはエリコに入り町を通っておられたそこにザーカイという人がいたこの人は主税人の頭で金持ちであったイエスがどんな人か見ようとしたが背が低かったので群衆に遮られて見ることができなかったそれでイエスを見るために走って先回りし、一軸桑の木に登った。そこを通り過ぎようとしておられたからである。イエスはその場所に来ると上を見上げて言われた。ザーカイ、急いで降りてきなさい。今日はぜひあなたの家に泊まりたい。ザーカイは急いで降りてきて、喜んでイエスを迎えた。これを見た人たちは皆つぶやいた。あの人は罪深い男のところに行って宿を取った。しかしザーカイは立ち上がって主に行った。主よ、私は財産の半分を貧しい人々に施します。また、誰かから何か騙し取っていたら、それ4倍にして返します。イエスは言われた。今日、救いがこの家を訪れた。この人もアブラハムの子なのだから。人の子は失われたものを探して救うために来たのである。ジーサスエンドジェリコ、and was passing through town, a man there Named Zacchaeus, a ruler among tax collectors, was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay in your home today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham. He, the human one came to seek and save the lost. Road to UC. It's Jonathan McCurley.、Um, I'm、uh, sharing with you from the Asian Rural Institute. I'm in front of our admin building. And we're so sad we're not with you this month, but thought we'd give you a little fill of ARI. This year,、uh, we have a lot less people, but we are really trying to do the things that we normally do and give the training that we need.、Um, over here, over at our farm shop, you can see right now, even, we have some friends, some of the participants talking over there. And、they're doing their field management activities, planning and discussing, and all kinds of good stuff. And、uh, you know, we've got some of our wonderful farm volunteers here. Over here, you can see them、um, from all over. A lot of them are from Japan this year. 
That's one thing. Because of the coronavirus, we have a lot less volunteers from overseas, and even our participants, as you've heard, uh, had a hard time getting over here. We only have one third of the normal class, um, but we are continuing the work. We're getting ready for our next rice harvest to come in. Yay! Everybody, this is one of our volunteers. She's going for local resources, so she just went to the local school lunch. School lunch and supermarket. The supermarket and picked up some things that we're going to use over in the mixing room. I'm going to show you what we do with them. You can see we have some of our um, pig feed over here. We've got some of our yummy chicken feed that we've been making. Again, using local resources. And in this pandemic, that's even more important, right? Like we've been so disconnected with the, the lack of ability to travel and all this. And I think at ARI, we've been reminded again that our local resources, what do we have and how can we use those are so important on um, this learning. There is so much to behold all of this summer uh, vegetables and now we are starting our autumn to plant autumn vegetables. This is where we spend a lot of our time growing our food. This is trivia but do you know what percentage of the food we eat in Koinonia at ARI that we grow by ourselves? 90 percent. Oh 90 90 90 <laughs> percent um, of the food that we eat here at ARI is what we grow by ourselves including the livestock including uh, crops like the rice and stuff and of course all of our vegetables. I'm here with Yayoi and Nibana. They are enjoying these carrot leaves. We've got uh, a whole, uh, more than 10 goats here at ARI and they provide milk for us as well as meat um, and of course friendship. Uh, the livestock is an important part of our training program. Of course many of the participants want to learn. Uh, goats are a, a larger animal that are a little bit more affordable than, than cattle, than cows. They're a little easier to take care of because they eat everything. Hopefully you don't eat my hand. So we're continuing life as normal here. We've got our goats and uh, yeah, enjoying. There you go. No more. Finished. Sorry. Thanks for the, being on the video. So here we are at Koinonia. And this is the place to where usually we are all eating and enjoying our time and fellowship. And this is a mural that greets everyone who visits us. But it reminds us of the joy of the harvest that's about to happen. We will have the Harvest Thanksgiving celebration this year. It's limited and changed, but that is really what ARI is about. We bring participants here, and as we live and work together, of course, we harvest from around us, but also God puts into their lives through us, and there's change, and we pray harvest. And as they go home, they're able to reap a harvest in their own communities. And that's our prayer. So we ask that you pray for us. Um, pray for ARI, pray for the rest of our training program that we're able to make it through. Now, usually ARI is bustling with lots of people and now uh, we're not able to do that. So we also ask that you pray for our financial situation. The Asian Rowan Institute continues its mission and we believe that God will provide. I mean, if that's through you or through your prayers, uh, that is wonderful. So we ask for your prayers for, for those things. And we do hope to see you. When this all ends, we know we will see you. But uh, thank you, our friends, our, our family at TUC. God bless you and have a great rest of your morning. Goodbye. God takes delight in us and fills us with every good thing and asks that we share our joy with others. What we offer here at this time is a testimony to God's goodness and these gifts will lead to rejoicing in Christ's church and all the world. Let us thank God. God of peace and justice, we pray for the peace and justice of your beloved world. And then we look at the coins in our pockets or the numbers in our bank accounts and we wonder, how will our dollars be of any help in what you are doing in the world? But we trust that the Holy Spirit will ensure that the habits of our giving will transform the habits of our hearts and that the convictions of our spending will give witness to the convictions of our faith and that because of your grace, even a drop in the offering basket makes us part of what you're up to. Bless all that we give to make real all that you desire. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. O oh God, we know that we cannot earn your love, but we can respond to your love. You call us to live holy lives out of gratitude for all that you have done for us. And we thank you this day for Christians who seek to live out their faith in their everyday lives. We thank you for people who find joy in the midst of trials and difficulties, for the hospital patient who gives hope and inspiration to the visitor, for the homeless person who teaches the social worker the meaning of faith, for the family that prays together in the face of death. We thank you for those who endure temptation, for the young person who says no to a friend who wants to shoplift, for the office worker who refuses to join in negative conversation, for the company executive who puts justice before profits. We thank you for those who are ever generous in giving to others, for the child who puts her allowance in the church's mission offering, for the young adult at a first job who dares to tithe his new income, for the neighbor who gets to take an elderly neighbor's trash cans out to the sidewalk. We thank you for those who are quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for couples who listen to each other in love, for people who count to 10 before speaking their minds and then speak gently, for people who remain calm and loving when others' tempers flare. We thank you for people who live out their faith by caring for orphans and widows and others in need, for foster parents, adoptive parents, for those who seek to work for peace and justice so that fewer people will be orphaned and widowed, for those who share a cup of coffee with a lonely neighbor, for those who visit in nursing homes. We thank you for people who are doers of the word and not hearers only. Oh God, may we be counted among them. Help us to hear your word and to find joy in doing what you call us to do. We seek to live our lives in thankful obedience and we pray that our intentions may be made real as we pray together the prayer of discipleship Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.第一、テサロニケ あなた また、その道からで善を求めてあらゆる願いと信仰の働きを成就させてくださるように。それは私たちの神とシュイエスキリストの恵みによって私たちのシュイエスの名があなた方の間で崇められ、あなた方もシュによって誉れを受けるようになるため
Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we must always thank God for you. This is only right because your faithfulness is growing by leaps and bounds, and the love that all of you have for each other is increasing. That's why we ourselves are bragging about you in God's churches. We tell about your endurance and faithfulness and all the harassments and trouble that you have put up with. We are constantly praying for you for this, that our God will make you worthy of his calling and accomplish every good desire and faithful work by his power. Then the name of the Lord Jesus will be honored by you and you will be honored by him consistent with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, friends. Lindor United Methodist Church. Uh, this is Jonathan McCurley. I'm coming to you from the Asian Rural Institute in uh, Tochigi, Japan, right north of Tokyo. It's been a year or a little bit longer than a year since we last uh, greeted and met. Um, and today I'm coming to you and greeting you in the name of our Lord, and our Savior, the Risen One, Jesus the Christ. Um, I hope you're having a great day, and I hope um, that you are uh, happy there with your, your friends, whether you're in the church there in Glendora or uh, maybe on Zoom. Um, today, I want us to um, think about kind of our, our calling, what God has called us to in our lives. Looking at uh, the scripture that was read, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, some verses there, and the Luke chapter 19 passage. Um, and thinking of that, uh, you know, it really talks about thankfulness, um, especially in the second Thessalonians passage and how Paul is so thankful for those in Thessalonica. And uh, I want to start sharing um, with you about my own call story and uh, remembering those who are thankful or those I'm thankful for um, in my walk, um, not only with Christ, uh, but also as my walk as a missionary, um, my walk as a pastor, um, and the things that God has taken me to. So, if you're ready, um, I'm going to take you on that journey. And I hope as I'm doing that, that you also are thinking of your journey and the people you're thankful for, um, that God has chosen and put in your life. Um, so, my call to ministry and missions really began back when I was in high school. Um, I grew up in Florida, central Florida. And um, at my home church, uh, Okoe Oaks United Methodist Church, um, Pastor Ernie Post um, was the, he was the uh, pastor there, the only pastor then. Um, and Pastor Ernie, he was a man of adventure. Um, he was always uh, kind of funny and um, very relatable. Uh, we had a decent sized youth group um, and <clears throat> always uh, he was interacting with us and um, playing with us, but also challenging us to grow in our uh, walk with Christ. Um, and so that's where I got baptized um, as an adult, as a high school student. And that is where I started my walk in really ministry. Um, and so Pastor Ernie, one day after worship, uh, he took me to uh, one of the rooms next to the sanctuary and um, said, Jonathan, um, I had a question for you. And I said, okay. And he said, have you ever thought about in your future what, what you want to do for your life, your career? And I said, yeah, I did it and talked a few things. And then he said, have you ever thought about working in the church as a pastor? And of course, I said no then. But this really got me on a journey of thinking about what would it look like um, for me to serve God, not to serve myself and my own desires or my parents' hopes uh, for myself, but God's hopes. And uh, I went to university um, and found a great church. Uh, and more than that, I found a great uh, campus ministry, a Wesley Foundation um, at uh, Emory University over in, in Georgia. Um, and then uh, I had the opportunity to actually kind of do some ministry and missions um, there on campus and uh, overseas. And so um, in my junior year, I went to Mountaintop, Tennessee, um, which is a retreat center, and they do a lot of work with the uh, people in the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, it was there for the first time on a volunteer mission trip with my Wesley Foundation that I um, had my eyes open to what uh, ministry could look like, uh, not only in the walls of the church, but in the name of Christ uh, into the community. And I prayed there for the first time, God, would you use me? 
Um, after my junior year, I went to Mexico on another mission trip. Um, an amazing time, very hard. Um, we were there for three weeks and it was uh, a very difficult time. But at that time, I remember falling down on my knees and saying, God, use me. God, use me for your people. Whether that would be in the United States, in Mexico, or anywhere. Use me, Father. Um, and so Reverend Helen Ninest, who was my campus ministry, and Reverend Richard Lee, who was the young adult pastor at the church, I really give thanks to them uh, for their uh, willingness to take me on these journeys and, and be with me and other young people um, and challenge us to see where God was taking us and to pray, use me. Well, my journey doesn't end there because um, uh, after this, I, I actually spent a year abroad during university. Um, and I came to Japan, uh, where I am now. And at that time, I was in a university. And um, I took many different classes. I was an exchange student. And in the university, our uh, Japanese social life class, um, which looked at you know society in Japan and the different um, facets of, of university life along with just family life and society, um, we were challenged to go to one of the university clubs, the after-school activities, um, and, and join it for a day and just kind of experience and write a report. Well, I enjoy singing um, and I was told about a Glee club. Uh, maybe in the United States we don't have to mean, we did have the show Glee, but um, chorus, right, a Glee club. And uh, so my friend took me and we went to the Glee club and I remember um, going there and just being shocked by the difference, but it was through that Glee club that God would then give me a call into uh, missions in Japan, um, which connects to now. It was in that glee club that I heard them singing um, about Jesus. And I knew that out of the 50 men in that glee club, only one of them could even say he knew who Jesus was. 49 of them had no relationship at all. And so I began to think more deeply about when I said, use me, what this would mean. And I give thanks to Dr. Ruth Grubel who was the first missionary um, and the teacher of that class that sent me on this uh, adventure, uh, even to today. <clears throat> After university, I spent two years actually as an um, English teacher in Japan, which was a great blessing. And it was at that time that I realized I wanted to be in the church. I went back to seminary um, up in Chicago here at Evangelical. Um, and at that time, I um, sought for many years and many times to try to understand how I would be a missionary to Japan, what that would look like. Um, and many times, it, it didn't work out. But what God has started, he will not complete. As Paul says in, to the Thessalonians, um, he uh, has called you uh, into this ministry. And so um, I was there, and I literally got a phone call. I got a phone call from Reverend Jungrea Chung, who was um, the executive director of uh, the uh, Asia, East Asia Pacific region uh, for the General Board of Global Ministries. And she asked me a question. I had sent in an application to become a missionary to the mission board of our church. And she asked me, Jonathan, I see that you speak a little Japanese. You have some experience. Would you ever want to go to Japan? And after, for several years, seeking how to get back, I knew God has answered my prayers. And I said, yes. Um, I went up for an interview, and um, there's a long story there of how I finally got to Japan, and you'd probably be bored by it all, or, or amazed, I don't know. But the point being that God was faithful, um, that God had called me, and even in the midst of my struggles, I didn't know where I was going to be able to go, the path I was going to be able to take. God was faithful. And so in knowing that, um, I... Um, came. <laughs> and so I ended up here at the Asian Rural Institute. Um, the Asian Rural Institute, this place, and you can probably hear in the background, they're doing work. Um, but at the Asian Rural Institute, I was amazed by the, uh, the, 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 the community here. You know, as we've shared before, uh, the Asian Rural Institute, it is a ministry of uh, training grassroots rural leaders um, who have come from communities in Africa in Asia, in the Pacific, and even Latin America, <clears throat> and through uh, their time here, we believe that they will be transformed into servant leaders. They will learn how to do um, uh, development that is sustainable, um, that remembers that God created the world, that the food 
is, is, is what gives us life. And so we don't do farming, we do our food life work daily as a community. We eat what we produce and we learn from each other. Um, in fact, this year, uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago, we had um, an opportunity um, to where actually some Japanese people um, felt called to do a, a, a time of repentance to our participants from Asia, thinking about the history, about what happened in World War II, and, and working for peace and reconciliation. And that's really what the Asian world is about. Sustainability and training leaders is great, but we need reconciliation. And at this time in the world, who knows more than, than um, the reality of ARI, that this is the truth. We need this type of life. We need this type of work throughout the world. Um, and, and that is uh, something I ask you to pray for, not only our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine and Russia, um, but also brothers and sisters in Cameroon. And uh, I'm wearing uh, clothes from West Africa right now, um, from in Myanmar. Um, we have graduates who are in both of those countries and really seeking to follow God's lead. And it is difficult uh, when a country is at war. And so, but at ARI, um, the call was not finished when I arrived at the place God was calling me, right? I think so often when we think about our calling, we think, oh, it's a calling to be a teacher, to be a pastor, to be a missionary, to be a, you know, whatever it is. But actually, it calls us into that to then do something. And so as he called me here, um, he put people in my path. Um, I remember meeting uh, Mrs. Makiko Kimura, and I give thanks for her life, uh, because Makiko, um, she's a local woman here um, in the Tochi area, and she uh, has some wonderful musical talents. Um, and she was, she's, you know, she plays the piano at her church, she you know, tries to be um, uh, useful uh, in ministry. But there was something more. And so she and, and another woman by the name of Miss Kyoko Ogura, who's really uh, kind of come in as a mother to me and my wife and family, um, they wanted to start a gospel ministry. I'm a white guy from Florida, uh, but I love music. And we started a gospel ministry. Why? We've got ERI. We've got people from all over the world, from Africa, from the United States, from Asia, from everywhere. Gospel is about our Lord Jesus Christ, not a certain genre of music. Um, and so we started a gospel choir, um, and that continues to today. Um, something I never imagined doing. Something I never thought I would have even the skills to do. But God called me to a place and equipped me with the right people. Um, and most recent, that's there's so many ministries that have come. I actually uh, teach food processing here at the Asian Rural Institute. Did it again this year. We made, oh man, maybe 80, 80 liters of uh, tomato paste and jam and uh, other stuff. Uh, at least. Uh, but uh, this is all things that, that God just puts in your path, right? And I think you can relate to this. Um, the struggles that you go through, the things that you go through, these are to give glory to God. And, and I pray that that has been your experience, as it has been mine. Um, and finally, um, and this kind of takes us into to where we're going now, um, three years ago, I, I got to know um, a pastor by the name of Reverend Takuya Izuka. And uh, Reverend Izuka he uh, came to support uh, the local church that I was serving that didn't have a full-time pastor. And at that time, I think he saw a passion in me, um, a, a passion to, to encourage young people um, and to do more within the Japanese society and while supporting and connecting ARI to the local area. And he challenged me uh, to think deeply about what that would look like. Um, and so now, actually, um, we have a new pastor at the local church, Reverend Yoshiro Kono, and he is very open um, to working more with me. And so uh, into the future, we are looking at maybe working, um, continue our work with ARI, but also working more in the community with the church um, in the area, um, starting more Bible studies uh, with youth, uh, maybe starting more gospel choirs, <laughs> um, reaching out into the community, into the the poverty um, that is, can be found there, um, reaching into the, the lostness that can be found there, reaching into people's lives and sharing a little about what ARI is doing into the lives of uh, local people as well, not just people in Africa and other Asian countries and Latin America so far away. Um, but he's giving me this chance, so I'm thankful uh, to both uh, Reverend Izuka and Reverend Kono uh, for calling me. You know, what I've learned through this is that the call of God um, it can come in that still small voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart. 
It can come through the Word of God um, as you read it and as you uh, hear it. Uh, it can come through prayer, but it can also come to your, from the person right next to you. It can also come from, um, you know, maybe through a sermon on the internet. <laughs> um, I don't know where it's going to come, but it's the voice of God that speaks into your life. And you will know, it's not just me, there's something different here. And so that is my prayer for you, that um, as you are walking in your life, you continue to find the call of God, not only into your ministry, into your career, but also into your everyday, the new things that God would have you start, the new ways that God would have you serve, how God would hope to bring uh, glory to himself through you, through your life. Um, as the scripture says, God chose us. Uh, and so we need to pray that we will be people worthy of that calling. Uh, it's not just for the missionary, it's not just for the pastor, it's for every single member of the body of Christ. And that is what I want you to remember today. Um, I want to end here with giving you some updates of what has been going on um, in our uh, time here in Japan. Last time I talked with you, it was in the middle of the pandemic. <coughs> and um, uh, I think, you know, I was at a place to where uh, trying the best to continue, but not really knowing what the future would hold. And after two years of the coronavirus pandemic um, with closed borders, um, this year Japan finally opened up its borders and we had the largest class that we've had in 13 years. Uh, we've had 36 participants, training assistants and graduate interns. And they came from some 15 different countries from Latin America, Africa, uh, and throughout Asia. Um, this is uh, a wonderful blessing that we've had. Um, after being such a closed community, just the joy overflew as they slowly came in um, after the borders opened in Japan. Um, and actually, if we add in our volunteers and our staff, um, there are some 20 different countries that are represented in, uh, here now. Um, and so that has been a joy to experience again after being uh, last year, really just Japanese uh, and a few of us from another country who, was our, who were already here. Um, it's been a, a, a refreshing and challenging experience to have people from all over share their experiences of life and teach one another. But also, um, an exciting thing that just happened this month is that Japan opened its borders to individual tourists. And so for a long time, you had to come in, you know, on a business visa or with a tour guide or what. But from this month, um, we're looking forward to welcoming in more volunteers and having more visitors from overseas um, to spend time with us, to understand the life of, of so many of our participants who um, are in all kinds of situations, not just war and the difficulties that I shared a little earlier in Cameroon and Myanmar, but... Um, just the unique experiences and their unique view on life that is so different from maybe things that we've experienced in our own um, uh, life in the United States. And so I encourage you to, to come out. Um, we are open for business and we're looking forward uh, to meeting more people. In fact, right now we have one of our supporters who is a counselor um, from uh, San Diego in California. And he's with us for a couple of weeks and supporting our program. So think about that. Um, but over these past few years, um, one of the big changes I shared last time was technology. At the Asian Rural Institute, we're used to working in the farm. We're used to having person-to-person -person communication. We're used to celebrating our cultures. We're used to uh, getting excited about the different things that um, are happening around us. And uh, the coronavirus has really challenged us to um, take into uh, understanding technology and, and how to use that which we're not all the best at, uh, you know, I'm trying myself to learn. Um, but we've gotten really good, and one thing that I've learned through this, especially this year, is I think we have some stereotypes about a, what a rural community live, is and what people from rural communities um, in other countries um, are able to do. And, um, yeah, my stereotypes, our stereotypes, are really challenged because some of the people who knew the most were from rural communities that came um, to participate in our program this year. And because of the past two years, all they've had to learn, and because of the proliferation of mobile devices in Africa and Asia, um, which have been able to uh, come in and, and give them infrastructure because they didn't have the old landlines and all the uh, infrastructure that was there for these older 
uh, telephones and, and internet, um, they've been able to really go full speed ahead into this 4G and 5G and everything that's going on. So we've really learned and been challenged to rethink what it is to mean rural, what it means to be rural, and to rethink how we engage with people from another context. And, and I hope that that is something for you as well, um, and, and there in Glendora, that you think about your neighbors and how do we engage and re-engage with them in new ways. Um, this year, for the first time in a couple of years, we had a, a, a bunch of people on campus for our Harvest Thanksgiving celebration. Um, we do that uh, the third uh, weekend of October, and it was an amazing event um, because the participants planned worship, they planned uh, dances, they, they had different exhibitions and videos, and uh, really how to invite people into the harvest. Um, not only the harvest of the land, which we gave things for, we had over seven tons of rice this year. We had almost two tons of sweet potatoes, um, <clears throat> but also the harvest of joy, the harvest of learning, uh, the harvest of, of support that ARI has received in this year during this pandemic. Um, so we just uh, really gave thanks, and I was so tired. I don't think I've been that tired. It's maybe because it's been a couple of years, but I was so tired after that. And so I was thankful for sleep. <laughs> and the rest we had, the harvest of sleep I had after that. Um, and then uh, two last things here is ARI is now moving into its 50th anniversary. So this is its 50th year of ministry, it's Jubilee, and we've uh, been thanking God for the Jubilee and, and, and praying and thinking more about what that means for us um, and uh, to set the captive free and to give rest to the land, to people. But also we're excited that next year we will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. Um, and right now we are planning uh, what kind of events and what kind of programs and projects we want to do. Um, but we're in the midst of, of preparing for this, um, to celebrate um, ARI's birthday um, of 50 years, to celebrate God's faithfulness and goodness to the Asian Rural Institute, um, and to think of what that means for the world. You know, ARI has over 1,300 graduates throughout the world who've come through this training program. And almost every single one of the graduates have been supported um, by churches and other organizations like the Rotary Club and individuals who believed in the mission of ARI. Um, and I'm talking a lot of money. I mean, it's about $20,000 a year for one participant to have this training um, for nine months. So the amount of love and, and financial support and, and sweat and tears put into 1,300 graduates over 50 years needs to be celebrated. And we need to be reminded that God has been faithful to achieve something through this, this small ministry that began really out of a dream. Um, and, but to realize that God also has something uh, for the next 50 years. Um, and finally, as I shared a little bit, I'm um, beginning to get more involved in ministry through the district. Um, and from next spring, um, we'll plan on uh, God willing that there's no more COVID uh, breakouts, um, that we will start some new activities, some new outreach um, in the greater Tochigi area, not just kind of around ARI. Um, so I will still be at ARI, but a couple days a week, um, I will be more focused on um, ministry in the wider area. And so we're praying about what that is. So I invite you in to pray for ARI. Pray for its 50th anniversary. Our participants will be graduating. Um, they have their commencement service on December 10th, which I believe is a Saturday or 11th. Uh, whichever one that is, I, and then that would be a Friday night for you in California. Um, but we'll post everything on Facebook. You can join us there for that uh, to celebrate uh, God's faithfulness in their training program as they go home to put into practice all the things they've learned here. Um, I ask you to pray for ARI in their 50th anniversary, that we would really seek God's will for us this year to celebrate it next year. And I ask for prayers for me and my family. Um, as I begin a uh, new ministry in the spring, um, Satomi, my wife, as she continues to support not only ARI in the church, but also um, the foster parents in the area uh, through her ministry. Um, also, our daughter Yuka. Yuka is uh, full of joy and, and an exciting young lady, but um, we have to be her parents. <laughs> you know, it's, we want to be her friend, and she's about 10 years old now. But uh, we need to learn more and more how to support her as she um, continues to grow. And uh, we pray, please pray for us that, you know, uh, her journey and faith uh, journey with, with Christ is, is one of those things that continues to grow deeper and deeper. Um, and finally, um, I ask that you uh, always pray for, uh, for our ministry 
um, as missionaries of the United Methodist Church. Um, we depend on your support, your financial support, uh, your prayers, um, and of course, um, your willingness to listen to us. So um, I pray today that um, as you have listened to this, that uh, you will hear uh, from the Holy Spirit about your own calling. Um, and, you know, just finally, uh, the Luke passage today, Luke chapter 19. Um, when Jesus chose Zacchaeus, when Jesus called Zacchaeus, um, when Jesus gave him this new thing to do, um, he had every reason not to be there. Uh, people didn't like him. He couldn't, you know, he was short, so he couldn't see Jesus. Um, he was not really welcomed or loved. But he saw something different um, in this man, and he had hope. And Jesus saw uh, what God had in store for Zacchaeus, not what everyone else saw. Um, and so whatever your life has been, um, whatever you think your call has been, I ask that you seek God in you, just like Zacchaeus. Be there, right up front with Jesus, and hear Jesus' voice. Uh, because he has compassion, he has love, he wants to call you into something new. Um, and you'll be able to respond to that. So uh, not only pray for us to respond from the calling, but I pray for you, um, that you will be able to respond to God's calling um, and um, do that with joy and seeking to give God glory in all you do. Um, so let me pray for you and, and let us end this time. God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to come uh, together um, through this technology um, and uh, celebrate your goodness. Father, we thank you that you have called us uh, and that you have chosen us um, to bring you glory. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you um, for the way that you have uh, brought us together for Glendora United Methodist Church's willingness to support our ministry here in Japan at the Asian Rural Institute, and also uh, for your faithfulness um, to Glendora, even through the pandemic, to the Asian Rural Institute through 50 years, uh, to me and my family's um, needs and um, that you, God, continue to be at the center um, of our ministries. God, we ask that that would be our prayer because we want to give you glory. Um, and just as Jesus, you called Zacchaeus when maybe no one else could see, um, and you put a new fire into him, God, would you put a new fire into us? Would you see us in our darkest moments, in our sufferings, in our struggles? And would you provide, Lord God, um, our, our, our path, the next step? the way to do it even, God. And we believe and we trust in your Holy Spirit to guide us as you have guided us until now. So if we pray a blessing over those at Glendora, that they would live into their calling, continue to bless the Asian Rural Institute, uh, our United Methodist Church, um, and all that you do, Father, to um, give us your, your, your love and your support. Let that be enough to share with the world that you, Lord God, um, are the one that they need. And so through this, um, and in this, and by this, they will know that we are uh, Christians, uh, by your glory, uh, through our love. We thank you and we pray all of this in the name of our Lord and our Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. At the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Please join me in our response to the word. We say, God created the universe and the world we live in and every living thing on this earth. We believe the creation shows us the power and presence of God and makes us want to praise and give thanks to God and take good care of the earth that God has made. We are full of joy that across the world, different peoples have their own culture and language, and that in God, we are all united together as one. We say, God is spirit, breath of life, who is always working to bring people to life in God. We believe the Spirit has been alive and active in every race and culture, getting hearts and minds ready for good news, the good news of God's love and grace that Jesus Christ revealed. We are full of joy that from the beginning, the Spirit has been alive and active. We say, Jesus is Savior and Lord, and that He began the Church and prayed that the Church might be together as one. We believe that in the risen Jesus, we are all brothers and sisters in the one great family of God, and that God calls us to live in faith, hope, and love for the sake of the kingdom of God here on earth. We are full of joy that we can learn, grow, and serve together in the name of Christ. Amen. Let our 
song be heard. Now let us be a vessel for God's redeeming word. We all are one in mission. We all are one in call. Our varied gifts united by Christ the Lord of all. We are the hands and feet, the mind and the heart of God. We are called to soothe suffering, to live with compassion, to build up God's loving peace. So as you leave this place, how will we live? We go from this place of worship to share the gifts we have been given. We go from this time of worship to build up the body of Christ. We go from this holy space to carry the holy to the world around us. Go in love, go in peace, go with God. Amen. <laughs>